Welcome back to another problem solving session for equivalent resistance. This is a kind of problem that you would find in a circuits one class. And I took this problem uh, from a Google search. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, a lot of these problems try to trick you with the topology, the way that they represent themselves. So this form looks pretty complex. And the question is worded in such a way that we're not trying to find the equivalent resistance, but the equivalent resistance is provided for us, and we have to find an element within that network. So it's a pretty good problem. Uh, so the so for the network of resistance shown in the figure below, the equivalent resistance network between the points A and B is 18 ohms. The value is an unknown resistance. So this is what we're searching for. We're looking for that. And then you have some multiple choice options. Uh, the shorthand way is to, uh, if you have spice available, is to uh, construct the circuit and then plug in each of these values and see what you get. That's one way to do it without manually um, doing the work, but we're going to do it manually. So we're going to first go for uh, we're going to go for this network first, this parallel portion of it, um, but before we do that we're going to uh, index these or give reference designators to each of these. This is going to be called R1 and we're going to call this one R2 uh, or R is fine I suppose because we have to search for that anyway. So this is going to be our R2, this is R3, this is R4, R5, that's going to be R6. It's going to make our job a little bit easier. So first we're going to go for the R2 and R3 combination. So RA is going to equal to R2 in parallel with R3. Which, the shorthand rule basically makes it so that if these are the same value, we can just take half. So it's going to be R2 over 2, which is going to be equal to 5 ohms. Okay, so that works out great. And we're going to kind of delete them now. Kind of looks weird with the gray background, but follow me here. So now we have, I'm not sure why that happened for some reason. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is RA. And we have 5 ohms. Okay, looks like it's in series with uh, what we did as R5. So we're going to add R5 and RA together to create RB. RB is equal to RA plus R5. It's going to be 5 plus 10, which is equal to 15 ohms. Okay, now we can delete this. We can delete these ones. Okay. And this is the resistor that goes from over here now. Some of the ways that these, these represent themselves look more complex than what they actually are. But if you redraw them, like when in, when in doubt, if it looks weird, redraw it. 15 ohms. Okay, so now because we can kind of forget about this line over here, it's not really necessary anymore. Um, if this were a stub, if, if this were an actual circuit, this would create an antenna. Uh, but we're not really interested in that. So <clears throat> here we go. We have a resistor now. We have these two are in parallel. So R6 and RB are in parallel now. So we're going to create resistor RC. And that's going to be RB in parallel with R6, which is going to be equal to RB multiply, oops, B, multiplied by R6 over RB plus R6. So that's going to be 15 times 10, which is a 150, <coughs> divided by 25, which is going to be 15 plus 10. Okay, great. So you have uh, 4, you know, 25 goes into 104 times, and then 25 goes into 52 times, so the result is that you have 6 ohms. Okay, now that's out of the way. We can delete these. And we just have a straight resistor from here to here. It's called RC, and it is 6 ohms. <laughs> Okay, now we go for this combination. This is a series combination. RD is equal to RC plus 10. Well, this is, uh, I forget which one we called this resistor. Let's just go back real quick. R4, okay. Plus R4. is equal to 10 plus 6 ohms, which is equal to 16 ohms. OK, 
Okay, and on all, all of this time, <clears throat> we've been leaving our target alone. That was the algebraic target of us trying to do all of this stuff to get the circuit more simple so that we can find an easier relationship that's going to give us that R value. So this is what? R is D, and it's 16 ohms. Let's put it over here, 16 ohms. Okay, all right, so now <clears throat> we have a parallel combination and we have a resistor that it's of known value, and then we have the equivalency right here. We have the equivalency of the overall total. So R E Q is equal to 18 ohms. But R E Q is also equal to the combination of these things, which is going to be R1 plus R in parallel with R D. Okay, now we have, this is known, that's, uh, known, this is known, but that's not known. So now we're going to expand the equation out just a little bit. REQ is equal to R1 plus R times RD over R plus RD. Okay, it's sometimes easier to put over 1 because then you can start to see that now you need to rationalize the denominator in order for you to isolate the R values because that's what we're after right now. So we're going to isolate that R. So multiply each side by R plus RD, and you get R plus RD multiplied by REQ is equal to R1 times R plus R1 times RD plus R multiplied by RD. Okay, now I'm going to have to expand my canvas just a little bit here because this, I'm going to have to show every single step, and that takes a little bit of effort to do. Okay, resizing, great. Okay, r dot r e q plus r sub d times r e q is equal to r1 dot r plus r1 dot r d plus r dot r sub d. <clears throat> All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Well, it seems uh, that's r, okay. So now we're gonna, we're gonna collect all of these r terms here. Here's one, here's one, and here's one, okay. We're gonna move all of them to the left side. So it's gonna be r dot r e q minus r dot r1, I'm just going to flip these just so it's easier, minus r dot r sub d, and I'm going to move this one over to that side, so it's going to be r1 dot rd minus rd dot req, like that. Okay, next thing I'm going to, I'm going to factor, so r is req minus R1 minus RD is equal to R1 dot RD minus RD dot REQ. And I can factor this RD since they both have the term. So I'm going to say now I'm going to divide each side by this term. R is equal to R sub D R1 minus REQ divided by REQ minus R1 minus RD. All right, and that's R, right? That's what, that's what R is. So now if we evaluate this for each of these values, um, for each of the values that we know, we should be able to calculate the resistance. Hopefully it comes out the way that we expect. R sub D, what was that? R sub D was 16 ohms. 16. What was R1? 10. What was REQ? 18. I don't know if this is going to turn out. It's starting to look negative. This better be negative, right? This denominator better be negative or we made a mistake. REQ is 18 minus 10 minus RD is 16, 16 here, okay? 
So we have 16 multiplied by negative 8 over 8 minus 8 is negative 8. Oh, thank God, right? Thank God these canceled out because if it didn't, we'd have an issue. So both of these go to unity and you get 16 ohms. That's your answer. Now you can plug it back in. You can put 16 there and 16 in parallel with 16 is going to create 8, right? And then that 10 plus 8 is going to be 18. So that kind of checks out for our sanity check. Um, so now we're going to go to the simulation world. So I created this simulation here. And um, what I did was I have all of these resistors here. And we're just going to check to see if this is 16. So we're going to put that one in there and see if we get the values that we expect. This is just a check that you could do if this was a take-home assignment or something. And you know, you're know you bugging out on caffeine and you, the exam is going to be turned in pretty soon. Just do, do a check you know, just to make sure that you're sane. Anyway, this is the resistor combination. The current is going to flow through A and it's going to get to B. Um, it's almost as if this whole circuit is on its side. We usually like to see networks on the right-hand side and sources on the left-hand side. Um, but I have here A to B for a source of 10 volts. I, I choose that. It could be really anything. And I run a simulation. And I added this little resistor. This resistor is 1 micro ohms. And you'll see why I did that in just a second. Go to transient right here. Okay, so the reason I added this is, to, is so that I could aggregate the current onto one resistor. I would have to add these values up, and it's just more simple to do that. And I chose a, a micro ohm resistor so that it's not going to affect the overall problem. But for a voltage of 10 volts, I see that there's a current of 555.5 milliamps of current. So if I divide these through, you know, I have 10 divided by 555, I get, you know, 18 ohms. And that's what I'm checking against. I'm checking against the equivalent resistance of 18 ohms. So if, if that if that checks out and everything works, uh, then you know that you did it right. Uh, so this was a, a little bit more involved of a, of a problem. It takes a lot of accounting to make sure that you've got your subscripting and all of all of this correct. But that's the end result um, of how to solve this kind of problem. There are there are maybe some simple shortcuts you can take, you know, but just by identifying the fact that these are in parallel, and uh, you can use plug in these values and see if they if they check out. Uh, but this is the longhand method and that'll never fail you. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.